Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Yun Zhuozhou, or you can call me Emily. I'm a PhD candidate from Professor David Asher's lab at the School of Chemistry and Molecular Biosciences at the University of Queensland. And today I'm going to present my work, DD mute PPI, predicting effects of mutations on protein protein interactions using graph based deep learning. Uh, the function of most proteins is intricately linked to the complex network of interactions they make. And many researchers have found that these uh, interfaces between the protein protein interactions are enriched in disease mutations and the focus of drug development efforts. So, understanding how these mutations would affect protein protein interactions is vital for understanding their role in diseases pathogenicity, drug resistance, and to guide rational uh, engineering. Uh, the effects of mesense mutations on proteins can be characterized as a thermodynamic cycle. So when a protein falls from the 1D sequence to the 3D structure, it releases the Gibbs free energy delta G folding. And the difference between the wild type and the mutant determines the effects of mutations on protein stability, that is delta delta G folding. And in my previous work, I developed DDMute, a deep learning model to predict the delta delta G. And uh, now moving towards the protein-protein interactions, when a protein binds to another partner protein, it releases the binding free energy, delta G binding. And then the difference between the wild type and the mutant determines the effects of mutations on protein-protein binding affinity. And when the delta delta G is less than zero, the mutation decreases the affinity, and when it's greater than zero, it increases the affinity. And so in this work, I developed DDMute PPI, where I aimed to uh, create a fast and accurate deep learning approach to predict the uh, changes in protein-protein binding affinity upon mesense mutations. So in the original data set from uh, SCANPI 2.0, uh, there were much more mutations with delta delta G values less than zero, and they decreases the binding affinity. And the original data set is colored in green here. Uh, in order to balance the data distribution, I introduced the hypothetical reverse mutation. So when an amino acid changes in the reverse direction from the mutant to the wild type, the delta delta G would be equivalent to the negative delta delta G of the corresponding forward mutation. So after that, the full data set follows a normal distribution with a mean value of zero colored in purple here. Uh, in order to better capture the interaction patterns between the uh, protein protein in the protein protein interface, I used a special representation of the local atomic environment, where within a 10 angstrom distance from the mutation site, each atom is modeled as a node, and they are labeled with one of the eight pharmacophores listed here. And we used a cutoff scanning algorithm to draw edges between atoms, starting from a minimum of 1.5 angstroms, which means the two atoms are only connected if they are located within this distance. And uh, we gradually increased the step with, uh, with 0.5 angstroms and, until it reaches the maximum of 10 angstroms. Uh, so there are two types of edges. The solid line indicates the interactions within the protein where the mutation happens, and the dashed lines indicate the mutations between the proteins. And eventually we would get a cumulative distribution of different edge types or different pairs of pharmacophores, such as acceptors, 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 aromatics, and so on across different distance thresholds. And this is the overall methodology workflow. Uh, the protein-protein complex, the, uh, the structures were downloaded from the protein data bank, and we generated the mutant structures using modeler. And then a set of features capturing different aspects of the proteins were generated. And these include some features calculated based on substitution matrix. Some are 
uh, capturing their atomic interactions. And I also included some physical energies from Foldex and also embeddings from the uh, protein language model ESM2. And also the graph-based signatures I mentioned in the previous slides. And then all the features will be input into the deep learning model and we tuned the hyperparameters and layers based on the cross-validation performance on the training set and then validated it on the blind test data sets. And eventually we deployed the uh, model to a web server. Uh, this is the DDMute PPI architecture. It is essentially a Siamese network composed of two parts, one for the uh, forward and another for the reverse mutation. And they share exactly the same architecture and the same weights. And in the end, I computed a contrastive loss and we aim to minimize this. And this is the detailed architecture for each subcomponent. Um, the graph-based signatures will be processed by convolutional layers and transformer encoders, and all the other features will be processed by two dense layers, and then they concatenate together and followed by another dense layers, and then the output layer. And here we used a special loss function. So uh, when we minimize this loss, it does not only ensure the model accuracy, that is the uh, trying to approach the predictions for the forward data data G to the actual experimental values. But at the same time, we are also optimizing on the model anti-symmetry so that the prediction for the reverse mutations would be approaching the negative prediction for the forward mutations. So the prediction would be symmetric. Uh, so, and the both of the two terms would approach zero. This is the cross-validation performance on predicting the effects of single-point mutations. Um, I divided the four data sets into 138 folds depending on different holdout type. And this indicates different protein-protein complex groups, such as uh, protease inhibitors, antibody antigens, and so on. So at each time, we trained the model on 137 folds and tested on the remaining one. So in this way, we can always ensure the non-redundancy between the training and testing data and uh, to avoid model overfitting. And in the end, uh, the model achieved Pearson's correlations of 0.67 under cross-validation. And this is approaching the theoretical upper bound defined by the experimental variations, such as different temperatures, pH values, and so on. And, and then I also compared my performance on, a, on several blind test sets with several other methods within the field. And the first data set is a, a AB bind data set, which includes only the antibody antigen complexes. And the second one is a deep mutational scan data set on um, MDM2 and P53 complex. And the last one is um, SARS-CoV-19 spike and ACE2. And across all the data sets, uh, our model DDMUT PPI achieved competitive performance. Um, this is the web server submission page users can submit a single mutation by uploading a wild type structure, uh, specify the mutation details, and users can also submit a list of single point mutation. And now uh, people can also predict the effects of multiple point mutations. And you can access the server by scanning the QR code here. Um, this is the result page for the single point mutation uh, it shows the predictions for the forward and the reverse mutations, and also whether the mutation increased or decreased the affinity. And also in the interactive viewer section, people can visualize the molecular interactions and also rotate the structure. And, uh, and people can also perform LNA scanning where the server will generate the predictions for each when mutating each interface residue to alanine, and 
map the predictions to a bar chart and also shows on the 3D uh, structure. And for saturation mutagenesis, uh, so here each row represents a single interface residue and each column represents a mutant residue. In conclusion, DDMute PBI is an accurate tool to investigate the effects of mesas mutations on protein protein interactions. The deep learning model was built by integrating the graph based representations of the localized 3D environment with the cutting edge ESM2 protein language model embeddings, leveraging both forward and hypothetical reverse mutations to account for the um, model anti-symmetry. It outperformed other tools on several blind test sets and it will serve as a valuable tool for probing the complexity of protein-protein interactions. And if you have any questions or inquiries, you can uh, email me or message me on Twitter. Uh, in the end, I want to acknowledge the University of Queensland, Baker Heart and Diabetes Institute, my supervisors, Professor David Asher, Rodriguez, uh, Yu Chang Myung, and uh, also I want to thank other lab members for accompanying. Thank you. Uh, we got questions. Hello, fabulous work, um, really interesting presentation. Um, oh yes, my name's Naomi and I'm with the Children's Cancer Institute. Um, I'm just wondering about how you modeled the mutated um, protein structures. So you just mentioned that you, yes, it was modeled. Um, how, how exactly did you do that? Was it just a single um, amino acid substitution? Or did you fiddle with where the residue sat in space so that it wasn't overlapping the protein um, partner? Yeah. I generated the mutant structure using a program called Modular, so it only um, changed the side chain angles. It doesn't deal with any backbone angles, but um, sometimes it's difficult to really predict how the mutation would affect the whole protein dynamics. Mm. So rather than generating something very, very different from the wild type structures, and it's not reliable, so I just focus on the side chains instead. Cool. And um, in terms of looking at uh, atoms within 10 angstroms of the mutation, um, is that 10 angstroms from like the, the center of your... Uh, uh, from the or? alpha carbon. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries. One last question. You talked about some of the features you generated, uh, which include the graph-based signatures, but also there are a couple of other things that you looked at. Did you ever um, assess the importance of each of those features? Where did the graph-based signatures and the convolutional network, the leftmost one, how did that weigh as an important, uh, in terms of feature importance versus the rightmost dense network? Did you ever look at that? Uh, so this project is still ongoing and I still haven't finalized everything yet because I just uh, deployed the server several days ago. So, um, so in terms of the feature importance that I'm going to like, uh, it, it's my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to shuffle each single feature value and see, like generate the noise and see how that will drop the final model performance. So if it drops a lot, it means that original feature is important. 